in this video, you're going to learn how to solve equations that contain logarithms. In section one, you're going to see an equation that has logs on both sides. In section two, you're going to see an equation that contains logs on one side. Exciting. Let's get started. This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. So here's our first equation. You're going to notice that there's logs all over the place, and especially logs on both sides of the equation. Uh, also take notice that I have a log base 7, right? All of these are log base 7, so I've got a nice common base. I could start manipulating this fairly easily. Uh, one strategy that you're going to want to use is to collapse all these logs down to as few number of logs as possible. That's because it makes it less complicated. So on the right side, you'll notice that I'm taking a sum of two logs. Now, uh, the property of logarithms say that if you're taking a sum, that means you're going to multiply the arguments together. So it's still going to be log base 7, except now it's going to be 5 times x minus 2. So that's how you can collapse it. If you don't remember the properties of logs, you could always go to back to Math Guide, and Math Guide will explain to you uh, the properties and why those properties exist. Anyway, moving forward, you're going to see that I have logs on both sides, same base, right? So I got a log on the right side, log on the left side, same base. Now, let's just think about this. If I'm taking the log base 7 of something here on the left side. I'm taking the log base 7 of something here on the right side, and the two quantities are equal. Well, the only way these two quantities could be equal if I'm taking the same logarithm with the same base is that the two arguments have to be equal. So I am now going to say, well, logic would have to tell us that the 2x has got to be equal to 5 times the quantity x minus 2. Technically, you could also say that I'm taking the anti-logarithm base 7 of both sides. Okay, that's your other way of looking at it. Nevertheless, as we move on, when you see this problem, devoid of logarithms now, you could say, wow, this is algebra. This is in my wheelbase. I now know how to uh, solve this. So, wheelhouse. But anyway, let's, let's solve this. So if you were to uh, solve this, let's do the distributive property on the right side. So you would get uh, 5x minus 10. You would then, <clears throat> or you could, subtract 5x from both sides. You could then divide both sides by negative 3. You could either leave it as 10 thirds or 3 and a third. You could even divide this to get an approximate value of 3 and a third. And there's the answer. Now, um, one thing that you should do before moving on is a lot of people don't make this little uh, visual or mental check here at the end, is you have to look and see if this is an appropriate answer. A lot of times when you do um, log problems, what you could get is something called an erroneous, sorry, extraneous solution. And uh, how does that happen? Well, if you remember anything about logarithms, you cannot take the log of a negative number. There's no such thing. It goes back to properties of exponents. So keeping in mind that I cannot take the log of a negative number, I am now going to look at this and say, well, if I were to multiply two times this value, okay, that won't be negative, right? Two times this value would still be a positive number, so I could take the log of that. All right, that's not a problem. Uh, over here, if I were to put in a three and a third, subtract, I still get a positive value, so I can take the log of a positive value. There you go. So that does make sense. I don't get an extraneous solution. I can move on to the next problem. So this is our second problem. Now you're going to notice that I do have logarithms, and the logarithms are only in one side, the left side of this equation. So to move forward again, I'm going to use the same strategy as the last problem. Uh, when you see uh, many logarithms, and if you could collapse that down into as few number of logarithms as possible, life is a good thing. So over here, I'm going to notice that uh, I've got a subtraction of two logs. 
So a subtraction of two logs can be collapsed into division. So I'm going to make a quotient of 2x minus 10 and 2. There you go. So I've got a quotient. Well, I could reduce this. I could actually divide this entire expression, 2x minus 10 by 2. And if I did that, 2x divided by 2 is x. 10, or negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. All right, so that is now becoming a different looking logarithm. All right, so when I have a logarithm only on one side, the strategy changes a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to use the conversion between logarithmic form and exponential form. So we're going to convert. Now, to convert, I need to know what this base is. Now, you don't see a base. Now, if you just see a log with no base, it's base 10. Ah, but this is a special log. This isn't just a plain old log. This is the natural log, ln. So if this is the natural log, there is a base. So when you don't write the base in this form, it's base e. So really, that is the code. Natural log is log base e. All right, so now when you do this problem, you could use the conversion, which when I show students how to convert, I do this swoosh, which looks like a snail shell. And what I'm going to do then is change it. So this is really base e to the third power. Base e to the third power is equal to x minus 5. All right, so that's what I get. Now, if I want to solve this thing for x, which that is our variable in the original problem, e is not a variable, it is a constant. I am now going to, instead of having a subtraction by 5, I'm going to add 5 to both sides, so I get e cubed plus 5. And this is a perfectly good answer for a math teacher in a math classroom, uh, but if you're dealing with a problem in the sciences, I have to think of that STEM approach, uh, I can actually use a calculator, and this turns out to be approximately 25.5. 086, rounding it to the nearest thousandth. All right, and again, don't just stop here. When you get this, either of these two solutions, remember to go back and see, is this going to be an extraneous solution or is this the actual solution? So you should always go back to the uh, beginning to see if it fits. And I would throw this in a calculator, but just to be quick about this, I want to see if we're getting a negative, taking the log of a negative number, we have an issue. So uh, when I take, let's see, 2 times this number, somewhere around 50, 50 minus 10, that's a positive value. I can take the log of a positive value, so I don't see any immediate concern. Okay, so there you go. That's the solution. So please make sure you go back to Math Guide, check out our lessons, quizzes, and videos. And remember, we have tons of stuff on logarithms and um, logarithms really look foreign uh, they have an alien like look about them strange rules uh, and, and math guide does make it understandable to you so you won't be disappointed take care I have always wondered why do they call them logs? Logs. Is it someone in the, you know, woodcrafting? Is it a, you know, someone who likes to knock down trees? Are they, were they arborists? Why logs? Logs. Logarithms. Where does it come from? Guess you gotta ask Nate Pure. Who?